It doesn't matter how long the racetrack is or how many laps are in the race. Winning means going the distance. Whether you're racing 500 miles on a high banked oval track or accelerating and turning and braking all day on a road course, if you know how fast you're driving, you can use algebra to determine the time it takes to drive the race's distance. During a race, the driver and crew chief are always in contact about speed, time, and distance. A good crew chief can calculate how much speed his or her driver will need versus the distance the driver has to go until the end of a race. Using a stopwatch, the crew chief times each pass over the start and finish line, and with the completion of each lap, the crew chief is compiling data for an algebraic equation. Remember, speed is a common term for rate. Speed times time equals distance. So the crew chief looks at the interval between their car and the car he is following. Using this equation, the crew chief can communicate how much speed his own driver needs to pass that car, maybe for a win. <laughs> Car races are often won or lost on gas mileage. The type of racing you see here is called Formula Mazda, run on road courses that sometimes curve and wind through cities. Formula Mazda cars are similar to Formula One cars, but not as powerful. Each car has an engine that produces the same amount of horsepower as all the other cars in the race. Some races are 60 miles long. The cars average 100 miles per hour. Remember, speed is the rate the car is traveling. At that speed, if a Formula Mazda race is 60 miles long, how long will it take to run the race if no caution flags are thrown? This answer is given in hours. What do you have to do to get it to minutes? Multiply by 60 minutes in an hour. So a race of that length, run at that speed, without any caution flags, would take 36 minutes. This track is about two miles long, so if we averaged uh, 120 miles an hour, it would take us one minute to go around the track. We will look at the data and we'll see what is our engine speed in revolutions per minute when we're in top gear. And compare that to the maximum engine revs that the engine can run. That's called the red line. If it is under the red line, we will adjust the transmission so that we know we are reaching the highest velocity that the engine can produce. The unit rate is the ratio of two measures where the denominator is one. The ratio here is 185.984 miles divided by one hour. So let's look at a graph that shows the average speed of this car over a three hour race. The slope of the line is 186 miles divided by one hour. Remember, in auto racing, the algebraic representation of S times T equals D can be the winning formula when they're trading paint coming down to the finish line. 